Adam Cole may never wrestle again after suffering a serious concussion this past summer at Forbidden Door. We've got an update on the status of CM Punk, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega amid their suspensions from the company. John Moxley, we've got details on his contract, his negotiations and his original plans before re-signing with All Elite Wrestling. We've got the ratings from this week's edition of AEW Dynamite. Bandido, where is he going to sign? AEW or WWE? Renee Paquette gives details on her signing with All Elite Wrestling. Plus, what was recently the lowest rated match in AEW TV history. We'll give you the details on that. Plus, an AEW star vacates a championship they're currently holding. Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. And as you just saw from that intro, we've got a jam-packed show. There's so much to get into today. So let's get straight into the story and start with some pretty concerning news, actually, about AEW star Adam Cole. Now, AEW's Adam Cole is reportedly dealing with a, quote, real bad injury that could potentially have career-altering outcomes if it's not resolved. Now, according to the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio, Adam Cole is currently recovering from a nasty concussion and has yet to be cleared to return to action. The Observer's Dave Meltzer disclosed that Cole could be cleared tomorrow or it could be never. Now, it should be noted that the veteran journalist did not have a clear update on the situation and questions raised about Cole's future are purely speculation at this time. Now, Cole last performed inside of a ring at the AEW New Japan Pro Wrestling Forbidden Door pay-per-view where he participated in a fatal four-way match for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against champion Jay White, Hangman Adam Page and Kazuchika Okada. Now, Cole was already dealing with an injury heading into the match. He'd already been dealing with a torn labrum and hadn't really participated in much in-ring competition heading into the match. So he already had that injury. But during the match, he suffered a really, really nasty concussion during the four-way bout, which actually saw a rust finish as a result because of that injury. Now, after the event, AEW president Tony Khan revealed to the, to the New York Post, rather, that Cole was, quote, cleared to wrestle at the event, but admitted he would not want Cole wrestling again until he was 100%. Now, if Cole, of course, debuted for AEW in September 2021, just two weeks after performing in his final match for WWE at NXT TakeOver 36 in a two out of three falls match against Kyle O'Reilly. Now... His last actual appearance he made on AEW television was in that segment where the Undisputed Elite turned on The Elite, in which um, he, Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, Bobby Fish all turned on The Young Bucks. Now, since then, that whole storyline or proposed storyline has completely fallen apart. None of them are on AEW television anymore at this point in time. Adam Cole, of course, has that injury, that concussion. Kyle O'Reilly had uh, neck fusion surgery. He's not coming back anytime soon. That can take a year or longer to recover from. Bobby Fish isn't even with the company anymore. He's participating with Impact Wrestling now. His contract expired and the two uh, parties couldn't come to terms. And the Young Bucks, of course, are suspended, which we'll talk about in a second. I know that the headline will obviously have some concern. And when Dave Meltzer says there's a possibility that Adam Cole will never wrestle again... I would take that with a massive, massive pinch of salt. Adam Cole will wrestle again. I have no doubts about it because Dave Meltzer said the exact thing about Brian Danielson earlier this year. Brian Danielson, of course, suffered a concussion at Double or Nothing in the Anarchy in the Arena match. And there was a period of time and he missed Forbidden Door because he was concussed, because he had those issues with the concussion. And he said the exact same thing Dave Meltzer was saying. He's not cleared today or tomorrow, but... He could, he could get cleared tomorrow or he could never get cleared again. And Brian Danielson wrestled this past week on Dynamite. So I don't have many concerns about Adam Cole's future in the sense of he's never going to wrestle again. Concussions are very, very serious, of course. We have seen careers ended but uh, via concussions. Bret Hart's the best example of it. And Brian Danielson was forced to retire in 2016 because of a history of concussions. So... They're, no, they're nothing to be uh, sweated and joked around about. Thankfully, we know a lot more, still not a lot, but a lot more about concussions nowadays and the effects of them and how to treat them and the long-term effects of um, them being undiagnosed or not being treated properly. So I think with everything that Adam Cole's been through physically over the course of the last 18 months, remember when he signed with AEW, he was already injured. He was already having shoulder issues when he signed and he's kind of battled through that his entire time uh, during uh, on the AW roster. So he not only needs to recover from this concussion, but in addition to that, 
he also needs to recover from the other the other issues. And if anything, you would almost say, actually, now might be the time to have the surgery on that shoulder injury if you're Adam Cole. Because AEW, it's not a case if they don't miss him. Clearly, they miss him. You would always miss a talent like Adam Cole. But at this point in time, where would he fit into the into the pieces? I think maybe now is the time just to take all the time off you need, recover from everything, and then come back better than ever. Speaking of the elite, we have an update on CM Punk, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega. When are they going to be back? No time soon. There is still no inkling to when the suspended talent from the All Out Brawl will be brought back to AEW programming. Dave Meltzer has provided an update on the situation in this week's edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, revealing that the investigation remains ongoing. He would also note that witnesses are still yet to be interviewed regarding the incident. Of course, these witnesses are as part of this external independent investigation trying to find out what really happened and what really precipitated and led to the events of the brawl after All Out back um, in September. And this is what Meltzer had to say, quote, Regarding the situation with those suspended over the fight, CM Punk, Young Bucks, Ace Steel and Kenny Omega, none of the five have heard anything from AEW. All of the five are continuing to get paid, and when you figure the contracts for four of the five are well in excess of $1 million, the total weekly outlay for people who are not work working is enormous. At least one person, not one of the five, who was there has not been interviewed and there may be others. Most are frustrated because they want to be back working at this point. Punk may be the exception since he can't work for a long time due to the surgery. None are allowed to speak, but several want to, but have no idea if they'll ever be allowed to. Any rumours of anyone being fired, anyone being told they aren't coming back or anything like that are incorrect as of midweek at least. None have been given the impression of a timetable. Some thought the Adam Page promo on Dynamite talking about his friends disappearing, Colt Cabana, Stu Grayson and Alan Angels, and his former friends disappearing, which was in reference to the Young Bucks and Omega almost for sure, as a sign that they are being acknowledged and it's settled and they'll be back soon. Is not the case but they did allow the reference but not the names to be spoken so going back to what I said previously I think it was yesterday when I, I questioned if that had been cleared ahead of time Dave Meltzer is reporting that that reference to the Young Bucks to Kenny Omega was cleared ahead of time which is positive that he actually had <laughs> didn't go to business for himself brother um, that he got that cleared ahead of time I suspect that this is not going to get uh, resolved anytime soon. And when I say anytime soon, I'm not sure this year. I don't know. Certainly CM Punk. We're not going to see CM Punk inside of an AEW ring this year. Maybe ever again. He still might never come back. But as far as the talent that can work right now, if they weren't suspended, i.e. the Bucks, i.e. Kenny Omega, do I expect to see them wrestle for AEW again in 2022? No. We're entering sort of the the home stretch, if you will, of 2022. We're entering near close to winter months. We're halfway through October. November and December on, are on the horizon. Traditionally, they're slower months for pro wrestling as well. And I don't expect anything to happen at this point. If you've still got witnesses that haven't been interviewed, then this that, that to me shows the pace of this investigation. This investigation feels very slow. And if this investigation feels very slow, that would suggests that the conclusion of said investigation is also going to be slow. And when you've also got the threats of uncooperative parties or possibly you know, parties or people threatening legal action, this is a very delicate matter. And to Dave Mouse's point, and I hadn't really considered this, but it's, it's a really good point. I was under the assumption that if you were suspended, they would be suspended without pay. In these four cases, and a still if you factor in the, the other person. So in all five cases, they're being suspended with pay. And if you look at this picture right here on the screen with me, they are four of the highest paid people in AEW right now. And none of them are on television. And all of them are suspended. That is a wild situation, realistically. Every couple of weeks, you have to take a step back and go, that is in the situation regarding all of this is still completely insane. Really, when you think about it, it's nuts. And I, uh, regardless of what this investigation comes to and regardless of the conclusion it comes to, regardless of who they decide is to blame and who they decide to fire or not fire, the blame ultimately still should lay with Tony Khan because he let what was a small situation regarding hearsay about CM Punk and Scott Colton, Colt Cabana get completely out of control completely out of control. He let rumors run amok. He let 
people allegedly leak stuff to journalists and then in that case again not resolve it and say it didn't happen he let stuff be said in the ring without being cleared he let people then respond to that by doing the same thing it's just became a giant mess and if it's because Tony Khan isn't around enough and he's difficult to get a hold of because he's got so many plates he's spinning, he's got so many different companies, it's not just AEW, it's the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's Fulham, it's his other businesses. If that's the case, he needs to get the structure around him that can facilitate and that can stop any of these issues or can mediate these issues. Clearly, the team he had around him in this instance didn't do their job and therefore Tony Khan also did not do his job. And now you've got a situation where all four people on the screen right there aren't on AEW television and they're still getting paid a lot of money. That's when you start getting into that's bad business. That's stupid business. And that's bad talent management. And again, every couple of weeks, I, I take a step back and I just go, that is such, it's, just, it's wild. It's, it's an insane situation to find themselves in. It really is. Let's talk about John Roxley, the AEW World Champion. Of course, he's recently signed a new deal with All Elite Wrestling. And there's some really interesting information about this. Now, when Moxley left WWE back in April of 2019 and struck that original deal with AEW, appearing on the company's inaugural pay-per-view Double or Nothing one month later, he anticipated the AEW Pact would be his actual last long-term contract. In his mind's eye, he said, look, I've just left a company where I've signed a long-term deal. I've left that. I don't really want to go back into another long-term deal, but I'll do it. But after that, that'll be my last big long-term contract. According to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Moxley's intention was to work in AW for three years and then go off and do whatever he wanted, work in the independent scene as he saw fit, while also maintaining a freelance relationship with Tony Khan's company. However... Moxley's AEW contract wound up becoming extended as a result of his time off in late 2021. Of course, he checked into a rehabilitation program for two months to treat his struggles with alcoholism. As a result, his AEW contract, which was set to expire in May of this year, did not terminate until mid-July because of that time added on. Now, under the new terms, Moxley will be part of the AEW roster through the fall of 2027. The contract also mandates that Moxley will work exclusively with AEW and its international partners, including New Japan Pro Wrestling. It appears that Moxley will no longer be able to work with GCW, where he held the promotion's world championship until losing it to Nick Gage on October 8. Moxley is not currently scheduled for any upcoming GCW shows or bouts. With the new contract, AEW expands Moxley's role within the company to include mentoring and coaching talent. While the financial terms of the deal were not released, he could have probably gotten in excess of $4.5 million annually if he returned to WWE per the Wrestling Observer. But as he mentioned, and he has mentioned several different times, it's not about money with John Moxley. Maybe those priorities have changed somewhat. He's got a family. He's got a young child at this point. But he said when WWE offered him that contract in 2019, when he was on the way out, he said, I didn't even look at it. I didn't even want to look at it because if I looked at it, I'd always know how much money I left on the table and that might eat at me. I don't want to know because I don't want to be here. Now, when it comes to the independent side of things, and this is really interesting, during the negotiations for a new AEW deal, John Moxley actually wanted uh, a deal to continue to do independent shows, while Tony Khan wanted him to no longer do them. In time, they agreed to it, but Moxley will likely be doing far fewer shows. So essentially, whilst Moxley is exclusive to AEW and its international partners, Moxley will do the occasional indie show. It won't be announced ahead of time. It will just be a, just a shocking surprise appearance. But Tony Khan wanted his champion to be exclusive to the company. Now, there is a bit of a deviation from where AEW contracts initially used to be. But to me, with the amount of money that's being put down for John Moxley and the the length of the deal here the as i mentioned aw's being built around john moxley for the next five years maybe and again i doubt cm punk will come back to aw at this point and other names will come and go but i think after the year that moxley's had tony khan's come to the decision actually you know what in the early days of aw i did kind of build the company around moxley he was the second world champion he was the top baby face in the company and and we were doing good we did well and since then, he's got shinier new toys and Moxley kind of fell down the card, maybe with his issues as well. But after the year that Moxley's had, Tony Khan's come to the decision, you know what? This is my guy. This is the guy I'm building the company around. And nothing's going to change when it comes to that. Now, speaking of Moxley, of course, he had his segment with Hangman Page this week on Dynamite. Of course, his wife, Renee Paquette, made her AEW debut. 
and AW's Dynamite's uh, Canadian debut didn't save its viewership from all other sports that were featured on Wednesday night. WrestleNomics has released viewership information for this week's episode, and Dynamite had 983,000 average viewers, which is down 5% in total viewership from the previous week. The key demographic also experienced a bit of a drop as this week's episode was watched by 417,000 viewers aged 18 to 49, which is down 3% from the week prior, totaling a 0.32 rating. Looking at the rankings, Dynamite placed number four at Cable Originals for Wednesday evening. And in the broadcast primetime category, the episode came in at number 17. Now, Wednesday was dominated by pro sports. The MLB had divisional playoffs, both going down on Fox and FS1. So that was really the situation there. And the NHL season started up on TNT, Dynamite's old home. So it was... It was sport, live sport, that dominated cable that night. And that is the case. I mentioned there are three things nowadays that draw. You've got live sport, cable news, and pro wrestling. That's what dominates cable right now. So that that's kind of the situation. But looking back a year, the numbers are up considerably for Dynamite. But that's likely due to the fact that last year's program actually aired on a Saturday rather than its usual Wednesday time slot. Again, that's because the NHL just came in and it was on TNT. So... Year on year, AEW are better off because they're in a stable time slot on a channel where they're not going to be moved around. Yes, they're going to be moved next week, but it's not going to be as frequent as it was last year because of the hockey, because of the NBA, etc., etc. So they'll be disappointed that they've dropped below a million. I think they probably assume that Canada, the debut... Big matches, Brian Danielson, Chris Jericho um, would do a decent number. It did not. But this is AEW's base, really, I said at this point. Dynamite now draws around 900 and... 50 to sort of 1.2 million that that's that's the number every single week that's the number that's their audience that's going to watch really for better or for worse and the rest is a bit of a fluctuation in my opinion Bandido. What's the latest on Bandido? Well, an update has emerged on the status of Bandido following recent offers from WWE and AEW. Now, of course, after his match against Chris Jericho on Dynamite at the end of September, he was offered an AEW contract. He recently confirmed he's still in talks with AEW, but revealed that WWE had also reached out to him and sent him a contract offer. Per Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, Bandido is, quote, leaning towards AEW. Following recent contract news, Meltzer noted that he feels that AEW would announce Bandido's signing shortly after he put pen to paper rather than, rather than waiting to make the announcement like the promotion did with John Moxley's contract extension. So um, essentially, once we get that announcement, we're going to know what's really happening with Bandida. But by all accounts, he's leaning towards AEW. But WWE are also interested. And, and they're, they're interested because, you know, one... He's a great talent, no doubt about that, and he will be utilized well by Triple H. But two, it would be a bit of a slap in the face of AEW, and we know Triple H would love to do that as well. So we'll have to see what happens when it comes to Bandido. Renee Paquette, of course, made her AEW debut this week on Dynamite, and she's given some new details about how her AEW deal came around and how much communication she had with Tony Khan uh, before her debut. This was on her podcast, The Sessions. She said, quote, I never really talked to Tony about coming into AEW. A lot of it was to John of being... Being like, man, I want to get back into, I want to be back in the wrestling world. I miss being around it. I miss doing stuff. Most of our conversations were internally between John and I. Him and Tony are obviously very close. They spend tons of, t tons of time talking about things. So I think it was more so them talking about it because I don't know if it was, I think a lot of people thought that I was done with wrestling to a degree. She also discussed how her time at WWE prepared her for helping other wrestlers succeed. She said, quote, I want to be there as a broadcaster, as a personality. I want to be able to help people if they want to help or need help on things. I want to be an ear for people in a way that I can. And yeah, just kind of use my eight years of experience having worked in WWE to see how I can sort of help in AEW now. Now, in addition, she's also given an update on her commentary future. She said uh, she was asked if she intends to set up the commentary desk in AEW. Simply, she said no. And then she said, I shouldn't say no, but I feel like I feel like anyone that just heard you say that probably had the same reaction as me. No, thanks. We don't need that. We don't want that. And that's always how I felt about it. She also added, I feel like people just have such a negative reaction to it. Now, again, I didn't think she did terrible. I, I, I really I didn't think um, she did terrible um, at commentary, but she did say that during her Raw tenure, she had a bad experience with former boss Vince McMahon being in her headset that soured her commentary experience again. I didn't think she was terrible at all, but um, AEW's got a lot of commentators, and again, I think the best role for Renee Paquette going forward is for her to be sort of a mean Gene Oakland-like figure moving forward for the company. 
Battle of the Bouts was last week, and it didn't draw very well at all. It drew 317,000 viewers watching live. It's the lowest of any Battle of the Bouts show so far. During the special, we also saw FTR defend their Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships against the Gates of Agony. But the match itself was viewed by hardly anyone. Per Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, the bout was the lowest rated AEW TV match ever. This is what Meltzer had to say, quote, Boy, that match did not draw. That, Gates of Agony versus FTR match, it was the lowest rated match in the history of AEW television. Now, I don't think that's a slight towards FTR, towards the Gates of Agony or the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. That is just the situation that Battle of the Bouts finds themselves in with AEW because no one cares. There is, there is no interest to watch that show, whether it's live or not. The time slot was terrible. It was at 11 p.m. till 12. That's a problem. But also, we haven't been conditioned to really care about these specials. So factor in, again, time slot, factor in, um, you know, does the people involved, factor in, People are not really caring about the special. And then you get the lowest rated match in AW television history. Finally, Frankie Kazarian's been doing the rounds in Impact Wrestling as of late. And AW star Frankie Kazarian has announced he's relinquishing the X Division Championship just days after he won it. Kazarian has decided to activate Option C, a stipulation in Impact, where the X Division Champion can relinquish the title in exchange for a shot at the Impact World Championship. Kazarian had only won the title on Friday, October 7th, from former champion Mike Bailey at Bound for Glory. He will now challenge current Impact World Champion Josh Alexander for the World Championship in the near future. Of course, Alexander has the title since April where he defeated Moose at Rebellion. He recently retained against Eddie Edwards at Bound for Glory and then against Bobby Fish on this week's episode of Impact Wrestling Television, which is when Kazarian made his Option C announcement. Now, there had been some question marks over the AEW status of Kazarian, given his recent uh, consistent appearances for Impact, but he did actually tape a match for Dark Elevation this past Wednesday prior to Dynamite. So he is still with AEW, but he is doing also these appearances for Impact Wrestling. So there you go, guys. That's the latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe button right-hand corner. Let me know your thoughts on today's AEW news stories in the comment section below. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.